What's up guys, this is Kefis, and today we're going to take a look at the Shadow Priest macro I've created for Gnome Sequencer Enhanced 2.0. So I've assumed that you've downloaded and installed the Gnome Sequencer Enhanced add-on, you've checked out my video about the macros I've made for it, and you've imported the Shadow Priest macro. If you haven't done any of those things, there will be links in the description below for you to check all that out. Otherwise, for the first time, if you have already imported the Shadow Priest macro, I recommend that you replace it with this new one that I've created. So if you want to, you can do that. Otherwise, you can just do whatever you want. But this video will be focusing on the macro that I've updated and kind of changed a few things around a little bit to make it a little bit easier and a little bit more, you know, higher end, I guess. Basically, I'm trying to make it perform better. So let's go ahead and hit slash GS here. If you don't know, you can do that to take a look at the macro. There's only one, Shadow, and you can also right-click it to go in here and take a look at it if you want to. So this is a Shadow Priest. This is recommending the talents. This all just a little bit more information. And this is the help. It says, Shadow Macro for Single Target and AoE. Manage Vampire Touch and Shadow Word Pain separately. The prior macro that I had created that I had originally uh, shared for you guys to import had a few more options. It had two and three. And it was trying to give you options for including Shadow Word Pain and Vampiric Touch in the macro. But having tested it a little bit more, I just don't feel like that performs very well in either single target or AoE situations. Um, you want to try to keep Vampiric Touch and Shadow Word Pain on the target at all times. Of course, if you've chosen the Misery talent, then you only have to worry about casting Vampiric Touch because it will also add Shadow Word Pain. So I recommend that you take that talent. We'll get into that a little bit more later. That way you only have to cast Vampiric Touch periodically to keep it up on your target. And if you're tab targeting, you can just tab target, press it, and not worry about it for a little bit until it's off the target so i think it's easy enough to manage that separately and make the macro itself perform better by managing pretty much everything else if you know anything about shadow priests you know you want to build up your insanity so that you can enter void form give you more powerful abilities and then use those when you're in void form so that's essentially what this macro is going to try to do so as you can see here right here you'll see that it says uh, target enemy, no harm dead, like usual, that's always there. And then if you're not in any form, you will enter shadow form. So if you're not in shadow form, this will put you in shadow form always. Um, and then if you go down here, you will notice that, hang on, there we go. If you've taken the power infusion talent, then this uh, will cast power infusion as a cooldown ability. No problem, that's where I always keep cooldowns down there. Otherwise, this is your macro. Now, I've put Power Word Shield in. I've done the same thing with mages with their ice barriers and such because I like to just try to keep those up at all times. I mainly think of these uh, uh, macros for leveling and for dungeons and stuff like that. So I can always put those in the macro. If you don't want it in, you can always just select it, delete it, and save the macro. No big deal. It's up to you. Otherwise, this macro's priority is going to use Void Eruption when you have enough insanity, and then the Void Eruption will turn into the other ability. It will do Void Torment when it can. It'll do Shadow Crash. That's mainly for AoE. Um, you should only use that when you have multiple targets, but it's really not a big deal. It's a big, long 30-second cooldown. I didn't feel like it was necessary to make a second macro, you know, just to put Shadow Crash in, and I also didn't think it was a big deal to use it. Just, just use it. It's, it is what it is. It's not a big deal. Shadow Fiend, you should only use Shadow Fiend when you're in Void form but this macro doesn't know that it will probably just cast shadow fiend whenever so if you want to have more control over that i recommend that you take that out of the macro and uh, manage it separately it's up to you i you know for me it is what it is i don't know if it's going to hurt me that much in dps and, and for leveling and stuff like that so i keep it in the macro it's up to you though shadow word death it will use that when it can there are some sometimes certain circumstances where you might not want to use Shadow Word Death. This macro will use it when it can, so just keep that in mind as well. And otherwise, it's going to do Mind Blast and Mind Flay as filler. Now, I've got this set up so that when you're using Void Torrent, which is a channeling ability, this macro will not interrupt that for any reason. Um, however, if you're using Mind Flay and any of these other abilities become available, it will interrupt Mind Flay because Mind Flay is mainly used as filler. And that's basically what this macro is going to do. Essentially, this macro should, for the most part, manage every bit of your rotation except for your dots, and those you will manage separately. So keep that in mind, and you should be just fine. Um, otherwise, we're going to test it out now. So let's go out here. Let's take a look at talents real quick. We'll go over those some. Now, again... Always remember, because I've had people, you know, 
asking about like, would this talent be better? Would that talent be better? Shouldn't you do this or that? Remember that the talents that I pick are mainly for people who are looking for an easier playstyle. I'm not always going for the most effective playstyle, you know, or whatever. I'm going for the one that's easiest to do so that it can get you through and get you by because it's designed around the macros that I make. Which, so if talents that make the macros easier are going to be better for the use with the macros. So keep that in mind. This is not about high-end rating or whatever. This is about getting through the content and having a good time. So a lot of times, if anything, think of these as really designed around leveling and stuff like that. Not really for mythic rating or whatever. So always remember that. The first talent we're going with is Twist of Fate. Uh, which just simply after damaging a target below 35% health, you deal 20% increased damage and 20% increased healing for 10 seconds. So it's not really going to change the macro that much. Really, a lot of these you could probably kind of pick whatever you want. Obviously, if you go with Shadow Word Void, um, you're going to have to manage that separately. I don't recommend it. Other talents you might be able to do just fine, like this one, Fortress of Mind, Mind Flay, and Mind Blast. Deal 10% more damage and generate 20% more insanity. You could go with that one if you want to. That's not a bad option either. It's entirely up to you. I just kind of like this one, especially for like leveling. It just it burns things down faster. Next up, um, this one really doesn't matter so much for doing a rotation it's purely up to you what you want i just like uh this one because i put power word shield in the macro so this will give me a lot of uh, movement speed it kind of adds a little bit more utility to power word shield and since i decided to put it in the macro i thought that would be best this is also basically cc do whatever you want you're going to manage it separately anyways um Lingering Insanity. Let me get this console port out of the way. Lingering Insanity. When Void Form ends, its haste bonus uh, fades by 2% every second instead of ending immediately. Again, that's not going to change your rotation at all. So I like that one because it just kind of it makes Void Form have more of an impact for just a little bit longer. I think it's nice. Usually, again, like a lot of these you could probably take if you want. It's up to you. Um, if it doesn't add an extra ability in there, it's probably going to be fine for the most part um same here it's, there's really not much to it this is the one i want to get into um uh, if you go with Mindbender, the macro will handle it because it's got uh shadow shadow fiend in the macro so it's just going to turn shadow fiend into the mind bender and it'll work just fine i don't recommend it though it doesn't perform as well as the other ones uh power infusion the macro will also manage that because i've included it in the uh, cooldowns portion but i recommend for simplicity's sake that you go with misery and it actually does have some benefits besides being simpler it will save you a global cooldown every now and then what you're going to do is you're going to use this it's going to manage both shadow word pain and vampire touch you're just going to use vampire touch instead of using vampire touch and shadow word pain so basically i could have said that a lot easier by saying that vampire touch also applies shadow word pain on the target so you use this and when one of them goes off the target, just use it again to make sure that you refresh that and keep that up on the target. And that's why it's separate, because it's easier to manage it that way. So, just keep that in mind. The last tier, I'm going with Legacy of the Void. Void Eruption may be cast anytime your insanity level is 65 or higher, and Void Form increases shadow damage dealt by an additional 5%. I went with this one for a couple reasons. One, if the macro doesn't, you know, like if you wait till it's maxed out, then you're wasting insanity by not using it right away. This gives you a little bit of a window. So once you hit 65, void eruption can be cast and, or yeah and transform you into void form so this makes it a little bit easier for the macro to perform by giving you a bit more window a lot of people I, um shadow crash you can switch to that if you want to and the macro will use it instead if you want to go with that one i have included it in the macro although obviously if you don't have that in the mac if you haven't taken this talent the macro is not going to use it so but it is in there if you decide to take this talent this is the one that is a little bit more complicated. I have not, I don't recommend that you do this, even though Surrender to Madness is regarded by many people as the best, um, most effective way. It does require a lot of a little bit of a different play style. It requires a little bit more skill. It's very effective, but you're probably not going to use this one. The macro is not going to um, cast it or anything like that. So if you go this way, you're more or less on your own. So it's entirely up to you. But otherwise, as you can see, pretty simple rotation you're just simply going to go to the target select it cast your uh your debuffs on the target there we go bam so there they are and then you're just going to spam your main macro it's going to put you into uh shadow form and there we go we're casting 
and we're going like crazy. So all I'm doing right now is I'm taking a look at the nameplate, keeping track of my dots, and as you can see, it's about time to go ahead and reapply that Vampire Touch and Shadow Word Pain. Otherwise, I'm just spamming one like crazy, making sure that I'm using those abilities, going into void form. It's working out just fine. I like it. Now, the only other thing here, we can take a look at the DPS, but as you can see, um, I'm doing 30k. This is in, we're in Pandaria. It's kind of hard to really test this and see its effectiveness, mainly because um, I'm a level, what am I? I think I'm like level 100. Yeah, I'm only level 100. I have just gotten the artifact weapon uh, on this character to, you know, test it out. So I'm not even level 110 yet on this character. I've got, I mean, there are so many characters, and it's really hard to keep track of them. So it's kind of like, you know, I'm doing the best I can here. Uh, but this one hasn't been fully, fully, perfectly tested yet with like high-end gear. I mean, my item level is only 683, so I'm not even geared up and in like level cap yet with this character. So, but this is the best I could do. I hope that it will help you out, and I hope you guys um, learned a little bit from this video and understand at least my thinking behind it. So, um, I'm going to obviously import... Uh, or export this new version of the macro onto my blog page. You can go there and download it if you want to. Um, otherwise, you can use the other one if you figured out how it works. I rec don't recommend the old one just because I don't feel like the uh, the macro handled the dots as well as you can on your own. Obviously, this macro is doing fine at refreshing it here and there. Uh, with what's built in so just keep that in mind you guys but otherwise i hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching have a wonderful day this is kefis until next time